Welcome everyone. My name is Jana Fritz. I am the new brand president for DF Seeds. Um, thank you for joining us for our new podcast. We are calling this podcast DF Seeds, Sowing Seeds of Success in Michigan. We appreciate you joining us and learning a little bit more about our company. Today, we are talking with John Deal. John is the founder of DF Seeds. And we're excited to have him on the podcast so that we can learn more about the origination of our company and his contribution to the soybean industry as a whole. Thanks for joining us, John. Continuing through history, uh, 1979, John, Deal Fields releases the first bean in Michigan with brown stem rot resistance. Huge accomplishment. Tell us about how that came about and how the uh, how that was received by the marketplace? Well, um, I, the, my problem is that my pet corsoys were starting to go down, and uh, and, and and the farmers were were complaining that 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 that, that, that a weekend of harvest they didn't stand very well. Okay. And so 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 so, so I fi finally went to the, the MSU pathology lab, and and they said we had brown stem rot. Well, brown stem rot wasn't supposedly in Michigan. Ah. Well, soybean diseases usually start at Iowa and spread east because of the concentration of soybeans in Iowa. So, 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 so um, I uh, I read where that that University of Nebraska had developed a gene for um, brown stem rot resistance, and um, and, and they were selling a variety that people could use as a crossing in the breeding program to solve that problem. Yep. Well, I wanted the soybean. So, 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 so I went to Nebraska, bought a pallet of BSR 101 seed yep. and, um, and planted it and it solved the problem. But it turned out to be a great variety on marginal soils. I okay. sold that, the, that bean that was developed as a, uh, as a breeder's seed bean and sold it for 13 years. Okay. And that's not the first time where, uh, where I picked a bean that was developed for a, a gene and, 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 and sold the one that was given to the companies to develop. Um, the the, the, the low, lin, low linic acid beans that were developed by Dr. Farr at Iowa State, mm -hmm. that, that the, he gave one parent to Pioneer and one parent to Asgro. Well, okay. that non-GMO parent were both very successful standalone soybeans that DFC sold as soybeans. So, so, so I always look really close at the initial insertion um, in, 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 in Michigan, which is so unique, it, it could probably work. Absolutely. Okay, very good. All right, so then into the 80s, there was a lot of plot work, a lot of collaboration with national companies. You've already referenced some of the names of the national companies that you worked with. What, well, what was so important, John, about plot research? And, and how did your work with these national companies impact DF Seeds for the long term? Well, we, had, uh, we did 27 years of cooperative research with Bioplant Dairyland. Okay. And and their breeder Hunt Wiley and I are still very close personal friends. Nice. Um, and and the first time they came, I was following him around the field and 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 asking him questions. I was like a little kid, and then he turned around and he asked me, he says, if you were to make a soybean to sell, what would be your parents? So yep. I told him that to my two pet parents I wanted to see crossed. Yep. And that became their number two seller. Oh, wow. So 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 all of a sudden we 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 started talking and and then along comes Asgro they wanted to put in a plot and and um and and Dr Lewis was there was a young guy that was in charge of that plot and I was following him and the, 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 this is a guy who developed the 1901 and 2501 Asgro which were huge hits in Michigan okay. um and so so I so I studied everything. The, 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 that he did and and it developed and and then another, then um and, and dr garland who was re representing callahan seeds which was the eastern division of stein had had a plot too and he was a really good teacher too so so all of a sudden the they all had their different way of looking for yield in soybean plants sure is that you can have a 
a doctorate in plant breeding, but that doesn't mean that you can see yield in a soybean plant. Mm. And and so, so so I was looking, still learning ways to try to see yield in plants. But then I, then I realized how important the testing was, and and um and and so 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 I started doing the best of the best testing, and and the best of the best testing was basically I wanted the best from uh, Asgro, Pioneer, Syngenta, and Dairyland against what I was looking at uh, at that originally against my public varieties. Sure. And 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 I would have the most yields to the toughest being as the checker because I wanted the checker to be stable all the way across the plot. Yep. And 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 most breeders believed in replicated plots, which are very important on the early stages of development. Sure. I believed in in, in, in looking at least 500 feet to, 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 to see how the bean changes with soil types. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in Michigan, they're always changing and, 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 and do it from a combine cab looking at the bean. So I was getting to know the bean like one of my kids, you know? Yes. And, and, and um, so, 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 so I did develop the love they took uh, uh, for of lot work. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So, John, at some point in time, we changed the name. DF Seeds uh, was the new brand uh, changing from the original Deal Fields. What, well, what made you change the name? What was the catalyst to uh, changing to DF Seeds? Well, um, um, the, the, the Deal Fields was looking at ways to try to separate the seed business from the farm. And 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 one financial person said that we could save a if we formed this corporation we could save a lot of money on insurance for employees. Mm -hmm. So 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 DFCs was originally formed and named by the mother of my children, by the way, as a as a way to save money on health insurance for employees. So along comes the the worst years of my life. I um. Uh, my wonderful wife died quickly, um, and then the, the, then six months later, we lost the farm. Oh, no. And and losing my wife was was a lot greater loss than losing the farm. Sure. Probably if the if, if it would have happened, the the you know the other, what you know it to just put things in reality. Well, um, the the problem that I had was that. I, I have a child that's both physically and mentally impaired. Mm -hmm. And on his mother's deathbed, I promised that he could stay in Dansville schools. Mm -hmm. So um, so then I had to figure out a way to make a living because I was broke um, and keep him in Dansville. So I had to do it in Dansville. Yes. And and and, and I had several job offers. Well, one of them was with Nate Glenn in Stockbridge, but there's no way I could keep my son in Dansville and commute to Stockbridge to work for him. I, sure. I, I, I would have been working for Chris, by the way, at that period of time, because Chris was working for Nate. And, and um, so, um, so I started playing with cash flows and trying to come up with a business that was there. And, and I had to keep the Asgro contract. Yep. Um, and the, the, and, and I, and the wheat business has always been profitable. So I was trying to figure out a way. So, 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 so I had, I, I I was really close with my uh, my fraternity brothers from Purdue. We were in an ag fraternity, AGR. We mm -hmm. were pledge brothers together, and they they felt bad for me, and they figured that I would need help to interview for a job. So three of them came up to teach me how to interview for a job, and I gave them the plan for my business. Excellent. And then they looked at that and says, "Okay," and they each threw in thirty thousand to uh, finance DFC, it's getting off the ground. Wow. And, 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 and one of them, Shorty Whittington, uh, um, who founded Grammar Industries um, and uh, um, signed the note at the bank for 300,000 to pay my growers. Wow. And the rule was that, that that line of credit could only be used for grower payments or to pay Monsanto. Okay. And, the, and and is that that money had to be there um, because 
I, I was leaving one of the biggest farm auctions in the, in the, in, in the state of Michigan in that time period and starting a business in the same building. I yeah. had to, to get the farmer's trust when they needed money, they had to be paid. So, so, so I lived off the, 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 the initial 90,000 that they gave me to start with. And that was my rule. I never used my line of credit um, that had to be there to pay the growers and pay Monsanto. All right. So John, when the brand transitioned, um, right. So we changed from deal fields to DF seeds. Uh, part of that transition to become a standalone seed company was facilitated from your friends from Purdue University, correct? Can you tell us a little yeah. bit more about that story? Yes, we were really close um, in, in the fraternity house when we every year would meet at the Indianapolis 500. So, to, so we forced ourselves to get together. We've been to 51 Indy 500s together. Oh, wow. That's and, great. And, and, and then it turned out to be. Anytime there was a wedding or a death, that we would all show up as a group. So, 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 in the first one of the group that had a son got married, that we drove to Minnesota and checked in the hotel. I says, and in the gal behind the corner, says, oh, the fat boy connection, because she couldn't figure out who was coming in. So we went from the frat boys to the fat boys, <laughs> and and and, the, and and so we're still called the fat boys. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and so, 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 so when I talked them into my cash flow and then they each threw in 30 grand, um, uh, the, uh, um, our first, the first in my board of directors were my best friends. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so when we would meet together, um, I was just dating Sandy mm -hmm. and she watched them in action and they would just tore me apart. And she and then she said afterwards, is there, are these people even your friends? But they were very astute business people. And, and and one of them was the great lawyer. And 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 he saw the chances of using the DF Seeds Corporation that was still alive and transferring it to the independent seed company. So so that was the transition from deal fields to DF seeds. That was the new generation past. The, uh, past our farm auction Excellent. and um and so 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 and in, in the paperwork for df seeds where we added another partner frank jones um took place at the indianapolis 500 drinking beer um <laughs> covering the papers and, and and getting everybody's signature and 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 and, and, and df seeds was well on its way at, 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 after the indianapolis race excellent excellent all right. So, and that was in the late nineties and, and kind of yes. about the same similar time frame, mid, mid to late nineties. Uh, DF has the experience of producing the first GMO soybean seed in Michigan. That's quite the momentous occasion. Um, when we look at the seed industry today and how, uh, prevalent GMOs are to this industry. So, so tell us about that experience of having the first GMO seed in Michigan. Well, um, ASGRO, look, one of the reasons ASGRO picked me because our county had the lowest level of crop insurance payments in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the chances of getting a 60% crop were far greater in Inham County than any of the INO states. So, 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 so when they had all this breeder seed of GMOs, they would send it up to me. To, to blow up simply from the fact that it would give um, them re re reliability of production. Okay. And uh, and I was still selling quite a bit of seed into Canada and, as, and they could never figure out how to get stuff through the Canadian border. And that first year of production, I sent 19,000 units to Canada for ASGRO and the following year, 31,000 units into Canada. And, and at the same time, um, that I, I was doing non non GMO production for ASGRO for Europe, so okay. I had sent five thousand units to Europe non GMO, which all passed, and Europeans had a very tough standard in the same plant that was sending the GMO seed to Canada. Yes, um, I, I do want to tell a story about that because it had a big deep effect on the future of the current um, DF seeds. Is that um. 
Uh, in about that time, they burned ag, the protesters to GMOs burned ag hall at MSU. Mm -hmm. You probably remember the, the stories of that. Yep. You're, you're, you're pretty young. You may have been when, when you were a kid, but, um, yeah, you know, and of course, Monsanto was up in arms. They were telling us to, to, to keep the, the lid on everything. Well, I was never too bright. So, 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 so I got a telephone call from Channel 6 TV and said they wanted to come interview me. And so, um, and people saying, well, they'll come burn our buildings down. Well, I, I, I still took the cowardly route. I put, I got my old Navy flight jacket and my mm -hmm. squadron hat, put it on, met the TV camera when my flight jacket and squadron hat and said, um, Monsanto's good people. There's need for this in the way and, 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 and defended the case. Wow. And, and, um, it, it wasn't as courageous as it looked because I was hiding behind. I figured they wouldn't want to burn out a Vietnam era veteran widower would not be a, a cool story. Oh my. And so, um, so, um, and, and from that, the organic people challenged me to a public debate. Oh, wow. And I says, OK, you know, um, I'm I, I've never been afraid. So so they brought in this graduate student from Minnesota to take me on on a public stage. And all mm -hmm. the organic people were there were just waiting to see me lose. Oh, my. Well, um, we started talking before the debate and and she was a graduate student of my freshman college roommate from Purdue. Uh -huh. So we so we go through the debate and. um. And and I uh, I held my own, yep. and and afterwards all these organic people came up and grabbed me and says, I understand you're still doing non GMOs and you have the highest yielding non GMOs in MSU trials. I said yes, and and um and and I said um I didn't want to give up the one bean that could beat 1990 Northrop King. I loved taking on the 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 that monster and and I had a better bean and um. And so, uh, so, so, so they says, we want to, uh, you license your non-GMOs and grow them in Ohio. So that opened the door to, or this debate opened the door for organic production for DFCs. Wow. wow. Excellent. Um, so, um, and, and, um, kidding. And, and also sitting in the crowd was a, a, a Monsanto regional man. So, 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 so not only what, was I facing the organic world? Monsanto had their eyes on me. Sure, so, sure. And, um, and and they were uh, afterwards. They were so, so, so said I did okay protecting the the image. So excellent, excellent. But I, but, but it was well, a risk, and but, yeah. but it had a double win. Yes, so, and and that story really um, illustrates even today's current product line for DF seeds, right? We we have yes. all of the options available from organic to non-GMO to traded soybeans. And it's a, a phenomenal opportunity for farmers to look and have those options available to them and, and still have a company be in support of whatever growing method is best for each individual farmer. So Appreciate your balance and your support of all aspects of the soybean varieties, traded, non-traded, and organic. That's great, John. Thank you. Thank you.